Hi, hi! Today we are looking at the Art and Fly alcohol brush markers. They come in a variety pack of 24 colors, and then there's an additional skin tone pack of six more colors. Right off the bat, I like the little bag the 24 set comes in. So we'll start with the swatches. Not a huge color variety, and you'll see I actually think the skin tone set is a bit redundant if you get the 24 set because it already has some good tan and peach skin tones, but it might be useful if you were getting a set that didn't have many skin colors as an additional like supplement to the other set. For the bleed stress test, it uh, bled pretty badly though, and left a pretty good mark on the back page. So you definitely want a paper barrier if you were planning on doing a lot of blending. Uh, moving on to reactions, the 24 set does include a colorless blender, and it does cut through this dark brown-red color, which is really encouraging. Acetone gives that starburst effect we've seen in some of the other reviews, though not as intensely as something like the Marby La Plume. Alcohol has the same effect as the colorless blender, though to a much lesser degree, which is what you'd expect since they're alcohol-based markers. And also, as you'd expect, water has little to no effect on the marker either. For blendability, as always, I start with the kindest gradient I can, in this case, uh, yellow to orange to red. The blend isn't bad, though it's not entirely seamless. No matter how many times I went back and forth, the dark color pushed into the lighter color, and you could see that sort of divide, but it wasn't terrible. I'd say it was a middle-of-the-road sort of blend. Next are opposites. I am using this royal blue and light orange brown. This one was not good at all. Very poor blend with the opposite colors. You can see a clear divide between where the blend starts and where the plain color is. Here though, the light beige does cut through the dark green just fine. And if you look, the most impressive part is the tip isn't stained at all, which is super rare. Even Copic tips stain temporarily when you blend dark and light colors like this, and you have to scribble on the page to clean the tip. As for line variation on these, the brush tip is a little strange on these markers. It's somewhere between a brush tip and a bullet tip. It's like a malleable, softer bullet tip. Because of that, it's hard to get a very fine line with them, however, Going back and forth between the finest line it can make and the thickest line you can get with them is pretty easy because it's such a flexible tip. But it's also a Japanese style tip so there are no fraying fibers like some of the other markers that we've had. So definitely that's good for the longevity of these. Color pencil blending went fine. It took a little work but both Faber-Castell and Prismacolor pencils made a decent gradient. So color pencil enhancements will be fine. And uh, finally, on to the main event, the actual artwork. I uh, recently got a Wonder Woman figurine, so I decided to draw that as the test piece for these markers.
And in case anyone was wondering, this is the figurine that I was referencing. But anyway, like I said before, the skin tone set is a bit redundant if you have the set of 24. I definitely didn't need it for this picture, and I'm thinking you could do without it for most skin tones that it actually offers. But the little six pack is possibly a good set if you're using it as skin tones along with a set that doesn't have a set, like skin tones included. Though if you're looking to do very deep colored skin, you'll be disappointed by this little set. Also, so the biggest problem I discovered with these markers actually is the caps. With the caps, it is very easy to not put them on all the way. Um, I will show you here. It's very easy to push them on part way and think that they are closed because unlike some other markers, um, the cap doesn't click. So it doesn't click back on when it's totally closed. So I actually ended up with an almost dry skin color marker from when I was swatching because the color that this color here that I mainly used for Wonder Woman's skin didn't end up closed all the way and the ink definitely came out splotchy as I was coloring her. You might have noticed I used the chisel tip actually to fill in a lot of her skin because the bullet brush end was almost dry. Actually, the whole marker cap and marker in general sort of feels on the cheap side. The plastic seems thin and light, and there isn't any sort of bevel on the edge of the cap to close it, which I really don't like. I don't know, they just feel a little cheap to me. Um, I do like that they are hexagonal so that they don't roll off your desk, which is super great. And uh, as for the limited number of colors, it actually seems to blend perfectly fine actually this is a nice little set if you're blending like colors the ink formula does that pretty well but as you see here the India ink definitely smudged when I inked it beforehand as did the um, Faber Castell however the other ones seemed pretty fine and of course if you inked afterwards it was totally fine but anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. I will give you the numbers at the end like I always do. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know if there are any markers that you would like to see done. I'll do any alcohol brush marker, any marker with alcohol ink that advertises it that it has a brush tip. Whether or not it actually has one will remain to be seen. And uh, on that note, I will talk to all of you soon. Bye.